Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about a pattern that happens all summer specifically here in the northeast that will have you catching more fish in no time. So let's get right into the video. We're going to talk about what this pattern is, how to fish it, what kind of baits you need to be fishing there, make sure you're catching more fish all summer long. So this pattern that plays in the northeast, it starts as soon as the bass are done spawning and it will pretty much go the entire summer long until the water temps start to drop again, typically around September, even October in some places. This specifically plays in the northeast, but I've seen it play in Florida and I've also seen it play anywhere that the bass major forage is bluegills. And this pattern that I'm talking about is going to be fishing bluegill beds. It's one of my favorite things to do all summer long up here in the Northeast. We have a lot of lakes, they don't have shad, they don't have other bait fish, all these fish feed on are bluegills. So they're gonna get near these bluegills while they're spawning, and just terrorize them all summer long. Their food is right there, they're never gonna leave, and they just keep picking them off one by one every time they need to eat. So how the bluegill spawn works is after the bass are done spawning, every full and new moon, so pretty much every two weeks, the bluegills will be spawning. They'll give, dig these little craters, Oftentimes you'll be able to see them with your eyeballs, but sometimes you'll have to use side scan or 360 or something to find them if they're off the bank, because even if the bluegill beds are off the bank, doesn't mean that there's not fish there. If you find bluegill beds in five foot of water on the edge of a weed line, there will be bass in that weed line. Typically, when I'm looking for these bluegill beds, I'm looking for them around stretches of docks because that offers the best cover for the bass. They'll go hide under the dock, they can stay right near these bluegill beds, and then when they're ready, they pop out there, eat some bluegills, go right back to the shade underneath the dock, deeper water, safer water, that's where they want to be. When you're looking for these bluegill beds, like I said, they'll dig out those little craters that look like uh, little holes, moon craters is what I call them. They're little holes all over the ground. Um, bluegills will not spawn like bass where it's one bed and you won't see another bed for a while. You will see hundreds of beds in one small area. They'll be loaded in there. And that is why the bass stick around. There's unlimited food for them to stay there. Um, if these bluegill beds are empty, I would keep moving along from that area. That's the other hard part. If you can't see them with your eyeballs, if you're finding ones off on some deeper weed lines, you don't know necessarily if the bluegills are there, but typically the deeper ones will have bluegills more often. That's something a little more complex than just talking about this basic pattern. Um, basically, when you find these bluegill beds with your eyeballs, if you can see bluegills in them, or if you cast your bait over there and they nip at your bait because they're guarding their bed, then you know there should be bass in the area. If there's bluegills around, there's no reason the bass should not be there. It's unlimited food, might not be the most amount of bass, but if there are bluegills, there will be fish there. If you go over and those bluegill beds do not have fish on it, oftentimes I will keep moving along. I've noticed I'll find a stretch that has bluegills on it and they'll stay there for a few days while they're spawning and then those bluegills leave, they'll go off to shore grass, whatever, before they come back and try and spawn again. You'll notice that as soon as those bluegills leave, each day you keep going back to those docks there'll be less and less and less fish. They actually move with those bluegills. But if you can time it right, find bluegill beds that are active, there will be fish in the nearby vicinity. So now that we talked about what bluegill beds are, let's talk about some baits that you wanna fish around these, how you wanna fish them, and so you can catch more fish around these bluegill beds. So I'm gonna start with two search baits for these bluegill beds, and then I have one finesse bait if the fish really don't wanna cooperate. The first search bait that I absolutely love to throw for fishing around bluegill beds is going to be a frog. Typically these bluegill beds are gonna be around lily pads, grass that's grown up. They'll dig out holes on the outside edge or in a hole in the middle if there's some rock in there or anything like that. So sometimes it can be hard to get a bait through where these bluegill beds are. And the other key thing is that the bass aren't gonna sit in the middle of the bluegill beds and just eat bluegills. All the bluegills would run, run away if that happened. What the bass do is they hang near cover that is near the bluegill bed. So just cause you're seeing bluegill beds, the fish might be a hundred yards away cause that's the cover that's the closest to those bluegill beds. And then they'll just swim over there and get bluegills whenever they want and go back. So a lot of times the bass will be in nearby mats of grass, lily pads, stuff like that. You can't really get a bait through. Frog is an excellent choice for two reasons. One, it comes through everything. So no matter where these fish are, you can get it through there and two, the profile looks like a bluegill, kind of suspended up on the top of the water, swimming along the top, anything like that. 
Yes, frogs can imitate frogs as well, but they also do a great job imitating bluegills around the bluegill spawn. As for colors, you can pick whatever color you want. It really does not matter. It's the silhouette more than anything that will catch you fish around bluegill beds. The way that I like to pick it, based on the belly color of the bait, on a cloudy day where you have a dark sky, I'm gonna throw a brighter bait. So you have that white belly against a dark black sky or gray background, that's gonna stand out really well. Allow those fish to find that frog. On a sunny day, when they look up and it's all bright up there, you want something that's gonna throw a little bit of a shadow, so you throw the black one and it'll stand out a little bit more against a lighter background, just like that where if you have a cloudy background, doesn't stand out as well. So I know that's a shirt and a wall, but kind of gets the idea across there. That's the way I like to pick my frogs there. Super, super simple. Find the nearest cover to these bluegill beds and just work it slow. I walk it in place, walk it slow around where these fish are and just kind of cover some water where anywhere that's really high percentage area. There's some lily pads, a mat of grass. There's bluegill beds 100 yards away. Work that area really thoroughly with a frog and you'll get some explosive bites doing that. Now, if you have some deeper bluegill beds or sparser grass, you don't have as much cover, something like that, that's when I'm gonna go to a jig, specifically a swim jig. Um, but the way I rig this jig up here, it allows me to also flip in between if I want to. This is the Sixth Sense Divine Swim Jig. It has a triangular shaped head that allows it to come through the grass, but it also comes through other cover very well as well. Uh, it's kind of a universal jig. And the number one thing with my jig, color trailer selection. I'm either gonna throw a black and blue or green pumpkin, depending on the water clarity, that's gonna mimic the bluegills the best. Trailer selection is more important this time of year. I'm gonna throw something crawfish shaped rather than on a swim jig. Sometimes you could throw a swim bait and you would think, oh, I'm imitating bluegills, a swim bait would be great because then it has the swimming action. I throw the crawfish one because it gives it that bulky presentation. A bluegill is flat and round. So if you throw this craw color or craw shaped bait, it gives it that flat and round presentation. And this is the six cent stroker craw. It has some, um, twin tail grubs on the back here. So it swims really well when you're fishing it as a swim jig. And it also flips really well while you're fishing it like a flipping jig. So that's an awesome selection right there. This combo right here is one of my favorites for fishing around the bluegill spawn and the frogs as well. Now let's get to the last bait, the finesse fishing bait. This catches me more fish around the bluegill spawn than anything else. And I'm sure you could have guessed it from some of my latest videos. This is the wacky rig. I catch more bass specifically around the bluegill spawn, but dock fishing, stuff like that, on a wacky rig than anything else. It just produces no matter what time of year, but especially around the bluegill spawn, those bass are gonna be suspended around docks. They're gonna be hanging out on very high percentage areas. Not everywhere is livable this time of year, but a nice shaded dock where they can just hang out next to bluegill beds, super high percentage area. I just wanna throw a bait in there. Everyone else knows those fish are there too. It's a super shaded dock next to bluegill beds. Everyone's gonna fish it. They're gonna throw their jigs. They're gonna flip their Texas rigs. They're gonna throw whatever. If you throw this Senko in there and just let it sink really slowly on the high percentage places, you will catch a ton of fish fishing this around the bluegill beds. It's a follow-up bait to the other two. I kind of clean up the areas with this bait here, or I'll use the other baits to search for an area. If I don't know if those bass are hanging around those bluegill beds, I'll fish that jig, I'll fish that frog. If I don't get any bites, I don't need to slow down and throw this wacky rig. I'll go somewhere else, find a new stretch, throw that jig, throw that frog. I finally get some bites. Now I'll pick that area apart and go to the wacky rig. I like a Gary Yamamoto Senko uh, on a wacky rig specifically. You can use stuff like Yum Dingers and other baits like that, but they do not have the same density as a Gary Yamamoto Senko and they will not sink right compared to that bait. So I go with the Gary Yamamoto's. They sink very well. I use a VMC Finesse Nico hook. Oftentimes I'm fishing around grass or other types of cover, but this bait still gets a very good hook set. It has a longer shank than a regular wacky rig hook. So whenever you set the hook, you're not losing any fish. You're gonna get this behind their jawbone and they're gonna stay hooked all the way back to the boat. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about some bluegill bed fishing. It is my favorite way to catch bass up here in the Northeast. 
go ahead, put some time in, find some bluegill beds and give these three baits a shot and you'll be catching a ton more fish all summer long. If you wanna learn more about how to fish a wacky rig, go ahead and check this video out right here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and thanks for watching.